Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and I am helping the Sound Alchemist with the 40 Facts About God School Thraka series. This is part 5. If you have not checked out the previous videos, please do so on our channel, or you can just follow the links. So let's get into 40 Facts About God School Thraka. Even though the prophet of Gork and Mork was quietly building up his army, Gatskul still launched raids across the Ultima Segmentum and beyond. Some were small, consisting of a few mobs. Others were massed assaults capable of overrunning a planet. The attacks hit Imperial outposts and wrecked havoc amongst shipping lanes. The orcs also ventured into Tau space to smash colonies or attack other orc territories. God School led many expeditions, but the main point of the raids were to train new leaders and to test his latest strategies. If the Imperium had collected and analyzed their scattered data files, they would have been alarmed by how many recorded attacks God School or armies bearing his insignia had made. But the Imperium was sprawling, bureaucratic, and bested by more obvious threats. Only the aged Yarick, who had never ceased his pursuit of his nemesis, warned about the impending war directed by Gatskul. In the year 997 of the 41st millennium, Gatskul allied with the most infamous Bad Moon warlord in millennia, Nazdrag Ug Urdgrok. The two leaders field tested the teleporter technology. This would allow them the ability to send mobs of boys, vehicles, and ultimately even the monstrous gargants from a far distant space hawk down onto a planet. This was tested on the imperial planet of Piscina 4. Only the Dark Angels saved that world from being overrun, but victory was not Godskull's real plan. His preparations were now over, he was ready to unleash his full force upon the Imperium, exercising a plan 50 standard years in the making. During the 57 standard years following the Second War for Armageddon, Gatskul regrouped his forces and reassessed his strategy, remembering his defeat at Hades High on Armageddon over five decades earlier. He was not eager to repeat this mistake. He intended that Hades Hive would be one of the first places to fall. In light of its importance to the Imperium, Armageddon's defenses were overhauled after Godskull's first invasion nearly overwhelmed the planet. The star systems surrounding Armageddon were now heavily fortified. New naval stations and orbital defense platforms gave Armageddon a level of protection better only by Terra and a few others in the whole of the Imperium. But against the wah that Godskull unleashed, this didn't matter. On the day of the Feast of the Emperor's Ascension, 57 Terran years to the day after his first invasion, Godskull returned. When Godskull's armada exited into real space, it devastated every planet as it steered towards Armageddon. Imperial task forces that hailed out to intervene were swallowed whole, never to return. The orbital battle over Armageddon raged for two fiery nights, but by the dawn of the third solar day, the skies were filled with the vapor trails and the incandescent afterblaze of orc dropships. In a roaring wave behind them came swarms of atmospheric fighter crafts and swooping bomber jets. God School chose not to fight at Hades Hive. In an act of terrible vengeance, giant asteroids aimed by orbital space hawks smashed the entire hive apart, annihilating its inhabitants and its defense. Ground-based defense lasers and missile platforms reaped a horrific toll upon the orcs, filling the sulfur yellow skies with crisscrossing energy beams and blossoming explosions, yet the greenskins were coming down in such numbers that they could not be stopped. Feral orcs and commando teams bursted from the jungles and mountain ranges of Armageddon to join the growing wall. Quick hitting strikes by the troops on the ground wrestled control of many defense lasers. Weapons that were soon turned upon their former owners. 
other orcs worked to construct landing strips allowing Deca jets and blitzer bombers to refuel and re-enter the fight more quickly. Gradually, the orcs began to dominate the dogfights that had been taking place overhead, and they soon ruled the skies. Anywhere the Imperial forces gathered to establish a defensive line was subjugated to punishing bombardments. At that stage in the battle, many chapters of the Space Marines began to arrive. Once again, their rapid assault threatened to unravel the Greenskin advance. Godskuld had foreseen this and prepared his own countermeasure. Godskuld signaled for his next surprise. In orbit high above Armageddon, space hawks and asteroid fortresses fired chucks of themselves to plummet downward to Armageddon. The orc rocks were unleashed. Orc rocks are hollowed out hunks of asteroid that have been fitted with crude engines, weapons, and filled with troops. They descended from orbit, and their fiery trail is slowed somewhat by the powerful force fields, retro rockets, and modified tractor cannons. On Armageddon, the rocks made landings in the jungles and across all Armageddon's continents, not just upon the populated landmasses of Primus and Segundus. Some rocks were lost to the ground fire or smashed apart by their own impact, but many more survived. Not only did they slam into the planet to crush anything below, but the shockwave of these landings were devastating. Even as the space marines began their attack runs to stall the orc advance, they found the rocks crashing amongst them. Each landed rock became a bastion of the orcs, a rally point and a ready-made fortress. As well as guns, the rocks contain teleporter arrays, like those first used by Godskull in the Piscina campaign. These were swiftly used to bring orc reinforcement to the planet, countering the space marine attack. They included special marine killer bombs, stampas, artilleries, and even gargants. Despite more and more space marine counterattacks striking deep into the orc battlefronts, the rocks and the teleported reinforcement had the Imperium once again back on its heels. This was the perfect opportunity to unveil another tactic from his long prepared arsenal of devastation. It was time to cut loose the speed freaks. Orc cults of speed have been around as long as there have been orcs. These velocity addicted warriors are extremely mobile. Every trooper mounted on some type of war bike, war buggy, or truck. By their very nature, all speed freaks are fast, impulsive, and likely to charge at the first opportunity. Only the commanding presence of Gotskul, a no nonsense goth, had any chance of using such headstrong forces in as a controlled fashion as he did. Godskull assured the speed freaks would wait for his command by completely smashing the evil sun's warlord, Gorhag, and his custom bike into a bloody scraphead of broken parts. Across Armageddon Prime and Segundus, roving bands of speed freaks tore over the open plains of Ash Desert. They were able to exploit the tiniest gaps between battle lines. With names like Red Wheels, Burning Death, and the slashers, each war horde of speed freaks was made up of a dozen smaller warbands. The Imperium moved out to eliminate the threat of the rocks, only to be hunted down by the fast and hard hitting speed freak columns. Zagboss Skargrim, notorious leader of the burning death speed freaks, encircled and destroyed entire regiments of Imperial Guardsmen. The burning death were well known for their love of fire, and the trapped humans were herded into large groups, setting up mass scorcher runs that lit up the night sky. Streaking above the ashen wastes, air wings of Daka jets and Burna bomber squadrons acted as mobile artilleries for the speed freaks. A fierce competition between the air and ground forces began with each side striving to kill the other's target before the other could join the battle. The Imperium's forces and counterattacks were wholly fixated upon the Orc Rocks and the Speed Freak warbands that existed out of their reach to the Humis. At this stage in the battle, 
God School deemed the time was ripe to attack the Hive Cities. The war boss personally led the many hordes on their route to attack Hive Infernus. Orc rocks had made landings in the fire wastes and the deadlands to the north and south of the main continent of Armageddon. These grim lands had been believed to be inhabitable, but their value became apparent solar weeks later when the hundreds of tank-sized orc submarines rose from the polluted waters and made landing at Hive Tempestora and Hell's Reach. Within solar days, Tempestora fell. Hive gang militia held out long enough at Hell's Reach for space marines to arrive, preventing the orcs from overrunning the other half of the hive. Most imperial officers would have denied that the orcs even had a plan, pointing to the scores of assaults scattered across the vast planet. They saw the orc attacks more as archaic messes than as a planned battlefront. They were mistaken. It was Gotskul's tactical genius that designed the deadly combination that was winning the war. And those were 40 facts about Gotskul Thraka. Now we continue this story in part 6, so be sure to subscribe to the channel to get more videos of this series. Will Gotskul take over Armageddon? Well, you probably know the answer to that, but you want to know more about Gotskul, don't you? So be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and sharing this video. You guys are awesome. Hope your painting is going well, and I'll catch you in the next video. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate, signing out.